Hey everyone, it is Nina, way past due for a family update. My apologies, it has been a crazy couple of two weeks, as I know you could imagine. COVID has definitely changed the way we do business, and um, it's a much busier environment. On Tuesday, I went home and left with my husband because there was one point in time on Tuesday where my um, youngest was at home by himself, so he was on my personal phone. I had my work cell that I was texting a family to family member. My landline was going off with the front desk. I was actually on a webinar on the computer so everybody could see me as all this commotion was going on. Um, I actually had a staff member sitting in front of me and a resident walked in and wanted my attention. So I literally was doing six things at one time. So my apologies for the delay in this video. Um, please know that if you call me and I have another manager call you back, it is not because I don't want to talk to you. It's because I want to get an answer to you as quickly as possible. And sometimes I know why you're calling. Um, and I am not saying I don't want to talk. I just want to divert you to the person who can get you your answers the quickest. So um, please be understanding of that. Uh, doing the best that we can to get back to everybody really, really quickly. And again, I say this every time, but I mean it. I really appreciate your patience through all these crazy changes. So. All that being said, here's the super good news. If you have not heard already, we did receive all of our tests back for residents and they are all negative, which is incredibly exciting. We did have three little scares. There were some leaks on a couple of the tests in transit to the lab. So we had to retest those people. That's why it took a little longer for me to give you this information. Um, got all the test results back. Everybody is negative. So now I have negative test results for both staff and residents. That is just, it makes us very happy as I'm sure it makes you happy as well. Um, also, we are about 80% ish, closer to 90%. See how that happens. Um, done with testing our outside third party providers. So we've been very lucky that people that are coming in to see us are allowing us to either test them or providing us with negative test results. Next week on Thursday, we are going to re test all of the staff. So this is something we've decided, actually didn't have a choice, but we were gonna do it anyway. Um, it's now mandated uh, from the state that the staff is test on a regular basis. So for us, that's gonna be monthly. So please pray, you know, we had our, our three scares that were positive, that weren't positive, that came back negative, the two times in a row we tested them. So um, th there is a chance of false positives with these tests, and um, we're just praying that we don't have to go through that again, because that was scary for us, scary for you, and we just don't want to have to experience it. So, so now that we've done all of the residents, what happens next? And the easy thought process is, okay, hurry up, open the common areas. And we had somebody here today that was, why aren't you opening the common areas? I wish it were that simple. I wish it was something that, because I want them downstairs too. They're, they're happier when they're out and about and they're socializing with friends. But what has happened is, as our business has changed with COVID, so has our way that we do operations. And as much as it kills me to say this, I don't know if we're gonna be able to have that big party I promised you guys two months ago once we get over the hump and over the curve. Um, we have come up with a policy. I'm very fortunate to be on a work group with um, only three executive directors in the company, work with the home office team and some outside counsel to develop our policies around opening the common areas. And we're doing it in layers, if you will. The reason why it's so difficult is we have to think about where's the furniture gonna go? How do we keep the furniture six feet apart? What's the cleaning schedule look like? Who is doing the cleaning? Do we have enough staff? Do we need to hire more staff to do the cleaning? What chemicals are we gonna use? Oh, and now that we identify what chemicals we're gonna use that are approved by the CDC and the EPA, where do we get those chemicals? There's a shortage across all the major manufacturers. So it's just not as simple as just open the common areas. Um, and I know that you're frustrated I promise you I am as well. We all are, even all the way up to our president. This is something that is such a huge focus for our company right now. We want to do it. We want to do it the right way. And we want to prevent the spread of the virus. And we are going to do anything by any means possible to do that. So please hang in there with me. 
Um, we, again, have the common area in the cleaning policy. We have got that taken care of. Um, and it's being a final approval. Hopefully by the end of next week, I will have news. And I know you've heard that before. I'm right there with you. <laughs> um, but again, as we think we're ready, something else from the state comes down. It's like, now it's this you got to do. So um, we're just doing the absolute best we can. And I want to be always transparent and honest with you. So um, say good vibes, a little prayer for us next week when we test the staff again. And um, hopefully I'll have some good news for you. Thank you to everyone who has participated in the Superhero Bag Project. I won't name you all. I'll forget somebody, so I'm not going to go down the list, but you know who you are. I am completely overwhelmed. Spent some days crying as I'm packing all these bags up for our staff. Um, and just how generous you have been as family members. I appreciate you so much. Um, a lot of you have brought goodies for the staff and just have been really incredible. So thank you. I appreciate you. And definitely as soon as I know, you'll know. Okay, thanks. Be safe.